All right. We're going to look at uh, memory tuning really fast. If you have host systems, and this applies to large clusters as well as small clusters, memory constrained and unmemory constrained, your memory tuning is something you really should do. Uh, the default for Ceph out of the box, I believe, is 4 gigs per OSD. As you can see, we have a small cluster here in front of us. It is a memory constrained cluster. Each one of the hosts only has 8 gigs of RAM. And we're going to take a quick look at it. Uh, here we have the memory usage. And as you can see, we have basically only 180 meg free. A lot of it is being used by the system cache. And a lot of, well, basically only has 8 gigs of memory. Uh, quick blurp about Ceph and its OSD processes. If I, this system has three, uh, this particular one, Ceph OSD1, has three OSDs. If I let the default set in, which is 4 gigs per process, uh, it would overwhelm this system's memory. And again, this applies in the opposite direction as well. If you have a lot of RAM, 4 gigs is not using your RAM to its uh, greatest effect, okay? So th what you need to tune is the OSD memory target. Now, if on memory-constrained systems, this will be apparent to you in a lot of slow ops, um, uh, lots of uh, Ceph OSDs hanging, things like that. And, and what's actually happening is it's trying to use swap space. So you see in our example, we have 270 meg uh, in swap. You're, you're not going to, I mean, you might have sufficient memory to have zero in swap, but this is, this is actually okay for this particular system. There's a lot of uh, junk processes running in the background that are, that are going to just get shoved in there eventually. Um, so, so how do we know how much memory to give an OSD process? My typical, uh, formula is to take the system RAM subtract at least four gigs. So you want to have four gigs for the system to operate itself. And then you take the rest of the memory and you divide that up by the number of OSDs you have on the system. So in this case, it's an eight gig system. I'm going to say four gigs for the system to actually run, especially if you're also running manager and monitor uh, processes in the same box. You want to have some extra RAM there. Uh, and, and then whatever's left over, divide that by the number of OSDs you have. And, and you see we have slightly less than 8 gig here. So, so in this particular case, uh, we have in our ceph.conf set to 1 gig memory target. A and you see that with these three OSDs, we're pretty much using all of it. Now, I know that buffer cache will use a lot. But again, you want to have about 4 gigs free for the system to operate properly. OK, um, so I'm basically giving these three OSDs on this on this box one gig of RAM. Now, now that's way below recommended, but this is a memory constrained system. If you have the opposite, if you have a system with lots of RAM and this buffer cache part is huge, that's also not good because you're not using your RAM effectively. So, again, you're going to want to tune your OSD memory target so that it is using more RAM to help those OSDs uh, manage themselves better. Uh, s writes are always synced uh, for, for, you know, the new blue store. So you don't have to worry about, you know, re write caches and things like that. So in this case, if we look at HTOP and we type in, you know, go to the filter and you type in Ceph-OSD, uh, you can see each one of the Ceph OSD processes is using roughly a gig, right? There's one OSD process, there's another one, and there's another one. Now, these can spike upward. The Ceph OSD memory target is actually more of a suggestion than it is a hard rule. It just depends on the, I want to say, the load of the OSD. But it will try to keep them within those within that constraint. It's the attempt. So if you're if you're seeing OSDs hang up, if you're seeing slow ops, and you're using default settings for OSD memory target, check your memory. See if the system is constrained. If it is, modify your OSD memory target. Now you can modify each 
uh, ceph.conf individually on the system to keep, you know, that particular system configured. But if you're doing deployments of, of a standardized ceph.conf to all of them, you can use the, you know, inject args to, to change individual OSDs. So uh, it's up to you at that point. But this is something fundamental. I've seen large deployments with, with constrained memory because people tend to like to buy big boxes with lots of drives and they put in every single drive, not understanding that the OSDs are, are using up all the RAM or they, or they buy just enough memory uh, to say, oh, it's four gigs per target and, and we're done. So just keep an eye out for that. It's a little quick thing. It, it can, if you are on a memory constrained system, if you see that it is, lowering your OSD memory target might actually improve performance significantly. It just depends. Or if you're on an unconstrained system, you're gonna get more speed simply by allowing the OSDs to use more RAM to keep a higher read cache. Um, I, again, I suggest roughly four gig for the actual you know, free system memory. You might want to go more, you might want to go less. I typically found that uh, in terms of performance, four gig is about a sweet spot. Uh, maybe six gig on some systems which are do running also monitors and, and, and uh, monitors and uh, managers. So that, that's all for this one, folks. Just a quick one for you.